much. Grand Isle often bears the brunt of hurricanes in South Louisiana and Ida. Oh man, it had some major destruction in Grand Isle and the mayor has a slogan on his desk. It says, as long as there is one grain of sand in Grand Isle, we're going to plant an American flag. We're not going anywhere. So the rebuilding continues in Grand Isle. See what happened was unbelievable. Grand Isle was in the eastern eye wall of Hurricane Ida, the worst part of the storm, producing the highest wind and storm surge. The island has about 2,800 total structures. After storm assessment, 460 structures were deemed completely destroyed, and another 187 had major damage. Only 7% of structures made it through the storm unscathed. According to City Hall, right now there are 1,411 active permits to rebuild or make repairs. Driving around, you can still see major destruction, but also progress. It took five months after the storm for power to be restored and a boil advisory to be lifted. It took seven months before the island's only school was repaired and kids returned to the classroom. Grand Isle had 1,400 people before the storm. Now the population is cut in half. The school had about 150 enrolled before the storm. Now the enrollment is 82 students. Grand Isle Mayor David Carmadell says for families, just seeing the school bus pull up was a turning point. And then you see the husband going to work, and he's looking at him and saying, there's hope. It means a lot. It does. But um, to have 82, it's, 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 it's a good number, you know, it's a good number. Carmadell has lived through many storms. Born and raised in Grand Isle, he became a councilman in 1989 and then was elected mayor in 1997, a position he's held ever since. He's also served as the president and director of the Independent Levy District of Grand Isle since 1992. He took us around, taking us to an area that was pummeled by Ida, one of the most vulnerable areas on the island, coming out of pass connected to Chenier. Right, just came right, right, true. that's the Gulf of Mexico. So Ida came to Port Fouchon in that area. And then we on the, 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 bad side of, the bad side of the storm. So what happened is coming through, and you looked at a wall of water that came right through, and it went like 12, 13 feet. Help is on the way at coming out of pass. Starting early September, rocks are set to be delivered to build a wall, accomplished and paid for by multiple entities, the Grand Isle Levy Board, the parish, as well as the state. What happens is we come in and we see the rocks are put this in 94. Mm -hmm. And what it is is to protect that this graveyard in here. And, and start putting this, and it builds up. So we're gonna come in and put some rocks all along here, all around in here, we're gonna put rocks for about eight, eight point nine, nine million million. Mayor Carmadell says once they put the rocks at Caminata Pass, the sandbar that was wiped out by Ida is gonna build back up. Right now, even a weak storm system causes major flooding in the area. For now, there are multiple people in that area living in campers, not chancing rebuilding until they actually see the rocks constructed. Now the beach side of the island is the other area desperately needing resources to repair storm defenses severely damaged by Hurricane Ida. The Army Corps of Engineers has a $122 million project in the works, all federal money, but it hasn't gotten that far. A multi-phase project scheduled to take years. $122 million that's, federal money coming. That takes care of Grand Isle Beach all along the island. But what's done so far? Well, they came in. But I remember you, through the 90s, we put the rocks into 2000. This works, you'll never see me on television. We put this in the 70s. Now they came in, they've come up to about this area here. So what we're trying to do uh, is continue the rock segments and tie it in. The mayor doesn't want to sound ungrateful. He routinely travels to Washington, D.C. to lobby for funds for different departments and was very complimentary of all the politicians and leaders that have helped. But with federal, there are so many channels things have to go through before anything comes to fruition. Time, Grand Isle, just doesn't have. I'm talking out of my heart right now is that you're there to protect your people. And we don't have time for the red tape. You know, if you can't figure it out up north, send it to, send it to Louisiana. We're going to make sure it happens. You know, it's things like that, that it's just the way the budget falls for the core is always in October. And, and like I said, by the time they get the money and the studying done, they want to come around hurricane season. It's a year after Hurricane Ida, and the mayor's office is still stationed in a temporary building in the parking lot of City Hall, with the original building still in need of repair. Earlier in the month, Carmadell announced the town can no longer afford windstorm insurance on their city government buildings. They are insured for flood and fire, but they simply can't afford insurance against wind damage. I'm broke right now. Uh, we're going to gamble. I want to live like my people. If they can't afford it, 
the town can't afford it. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and I'm going to take that $180,000 and I'm going to keep it in a checking account so I can feed my workers to feed their families, to make sure that they got food on the table. You know, and that's what I'm going to do. Grand Isle is Louisiana's only inhabited barrier island. Many wonder why people rebuild. Well, for some, they can't afford to leave. For others, it's a place they simply can't live without. Watch the breeze come through the windows and just watch it in the Gulf of Mexico. And then looking behind you and seeing the sunset and then the sun, sunrise in the morning off the beach. It's amazing the people that just get up and drink a cup of coffee. And then in the evening, they're drinking a glass of wine on the other side of the camp. And they're watching this and they said, you know what, we live in paradise. It's beautiful, you know, and, and listen, it, it's, it's worth saving. In July, Grand Isle hosted the Island Strong Beach Fest for the first time, and the goal was to raise money to give parents with family something to come back to, raise money for the recreation department, and they raised, raised close to $300,000. And I also wanted to mention this Saturday, Grand Isle is having a free concert on the beach just for everyone who has helped. It's from 12 to 5 uh, in the middle of the island right across from Tommy's Restaurant, so please um, enjoy free music from the city, thanking everybody so much. All right, let's get over to Sheep.